So, to continue on our fool study, we're up to the 82nd fool. Foolish. Fool. Only thing I had not done, which which I did, was folly. And we're in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 1. 19, verse 1. And this is the 15th video or audio of this series about fools. I wouldn't think there'd be so much. And yet the Bible tells us about fools, explains to us about fools, that we may not be fools. And I found myself to be foolish. I found myself to be a fool, even as a Christian. So Proverbs 19, 1, Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Who wants to be poor? And yet, poor that walketh rightly, correctly, is better than fool. And then we have not only the fool that, you know, he can be rich, and if he's perverse in his lips, in his words, perverted, he's a fool. And so far, we've only seen a few, if not just one good few fool in the Bible. Fools are not honored by God. If there's one thing that Jesus Christ was never, he was never a fool. So poor people are better than fools. Better be dirt poor, better be poor and have bills than being perverse. Proverbs 19.3. Not going very far, have we? The foolishness of man perverted, prevented, uh, excuse me, perverted his way. Now we just saw in verse 1 perverse. Now we have perversion. And, uh, and his heart fretted against the Lord. That fret is the only time that word shows up. The perverseness of man is his being the fool. A man that ends up where is, is not the smart way has been polluted by his own foolishness. The foolish heart is against or contrary to God. So then his heart being wrong, he's already in foolishness to the end. And if it be a Christian, he'll end up with ashes and smoke. And if it's a lost man, he'll end up in the hell into the lake of fire. Preverted his way, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So a man of religion has perverted his way against Jesus Christ. So any man that has not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the words of Jesus, John 14, 6, is a fool. And his heart fretteth against the Lord. So this verse goes to those who have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Baptism. I go to this church. I'm this denomination. I'm good. You're a fool, according to the Bible. I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have trusted in his gospel. I have put my faith and in, in belief in the finished work of Jesus. You're not a fool. According to Proverbs 19, verse 3. Proverbs 19:10. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. Delight, yes. He has delight. Many people have delights. All kinds of people have delight. But not the delight found in the way of righteousness. There is no joy, there is no praise, there is no glory in a fool. Now he may delight in his sin. He may delight in his wickedness. He may delight himself against God. 
But worldly delight is temporal and it's costly. I've got love, joy, and peace of the Lord with a wife in a hospital. I don't turn to the delight of a bar room. I don't turn to the delight of drugs. And you've seen people with alcohol, and you've seen people with drugs, they're giggling, they're laughing, and they think they're having a good time. Hebrew says about Moses that he could have had the joy of, of, of pleasure for a season. The Bible does say pleasure, but only for its season. The worldly pleasure doesn't last. It's foolish. It's foolish to waste your money on something that's not going to last. In the eternal life, the new Jerusalem, new heavens, and new earth, there is no alcohol, there's no breweries, there's no distilleries, there's no tobacco product, there's no pharmacies. That's not needed no more. And you won't find that in hell either, as a lost man. Your drink, your drugs, your whatever you do to get you to the light is not going to be found in heaven. It's not going to be found in hell if it's worldly. Now, if your delight is in the Lord Jesus Christ, that just goes on forever. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Proverbs 19, 13. A foolish man is the calamity of his father. Excuse me, a foolish, foolish son is the calamity of his father. And the contentions of a wife are a continued dropping. All right, we got two aspects of this verse. A foolish son. What's a foolish son? Calamity to his father. The father of a fool has no joy. The father of a fool can't, I know it's a sin, but brag about his son. The foolish son gives his father heartache. The foolish son gives his, gives his father gray hair. The foolish son gives his father worry and concern. Or the father of a fool just may not care about that son no more. You know, that prodigal son that left the father, gave me all my riches and went out and spent all that he had. He was foolish for a while. But he became wise and came back to the father and the father still welcomed him. Foolish and contentions are the same verse for a father and for a wife. The foolish son is a calamity to his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continued dropping. And I feel sorry for this man, this, this father, this husband, because not only does he have a foolish son, but he's got a wife of argument. He's got a wife that gives him hard time. He does not have a happy family. In one verse. Proverbs 19.29. Proverbs 19.29. Judgments are prepared for scorners. Uh, you believe on Jesus. Oh, you holy roller. You, oh, you Bible thumper. Oh, you believe in God. Uh, Satan rules. Satan loves you. Oh. And you'll face judgment. You'll face judgment. Remember what Jesus told Paul on the road to Damascus, why persecute thou me? Now, Paul never persecuted Jesus Christ. He persecuted the Christians, and Jesus took it personally. And when you scorn those who are going out preaching the gospel, trying to get people about the gospel of Jesus Christ and how to be saved and how to grow Christians, and you scorn them, judgment's coming your way, my friend, saved or lost. And then we lump that with, and stripes for the back of fools. Stripes, cat and nine tails, a whipping, a whipping post, being in the stocks and an open shame. It's a correction, it's a rod, it's whipping. Trying to do something for the fool to help him. The Correction Institute today giving you television, giving you food, giving you air conditioning, giving you heating, giving you a security force, giving you a, a, ba a, a basketball court, giving you a baseball field, giving you television. That's not correction. That's entertainment. And here, scorners. 
and fools, according to the Bible, are to be corrected of their ways. You don't give them an office of, of, of higher advancement. You don't give them the, the time on television and all that. You don't give them rewards. You give them correction. According to the Bible, it's by stripes or by a rod. That's not too popular today, is it? Proverbs 20, verse 3. By the way, we talked about the last time, uh, number 14, you go back. We talked about the education system of trying to educate a fool when his heart is not in it. You need to bring back, which you won't, the teacher wrapping your knuckles with a, with a ruler, the teacher taking a switch and taking it to your behind. You take it back to a child being put in a corner with a dunce hat. But that's not going to happen. You're not going to correct them. You're going to let that, that student take over. You're going to let that student rule the adults. It'll get worse, I guarantee. Take my words. Proverbs 20, verse 3. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. I'm going to get in an argument. And I won't say it. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go no further. I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to get in the problem. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get in the argument. I'll go back, pray, calm down, see what other opportunities, what other things I can do to avoid the strife. All right, but we're not done. Verse three. But. But. So. When we talk about the fool here, he's not the one going to say, well, I'll just back off, pray, and give it time. But every fool, every fool, every fool will be meddling. He's getting involved in arguments and fights and strife that are not even his. He's a gossip. He's a busybody. Oh, oh what, what's happening between you two? What's going on between you two? You two look like you're at odds. Not only does he not cease from his own problems, but he gets into other people's problems. And if you are a person that you are meddling in people's situations, I won't even say problems, you are nosy and you want to know. If it's none of your business, you're a fool. You're a fool. How's that for, shall we take a little time for us to confess our sins? For he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. How about being foolish and meddling? Proverbs 21, 20. Ooh, went right over. 21, 20. There is treasure to be desired. Ooh, treasure island. Treasure chest. A treasure map. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. And that oil is not for gasoline and lubrication. That oil is for lights. It's an oil for the face. It's, it's an oil for anointing. The wise has a treasure. The wise has oil. But the foolish spend it. Mom, it's dark. Turn the lights on. I can't. Your father spent all the money for the oil. We have no more oil. That's what it is. And a man that will take, and one of the things I can think about, if he takes his family's money for supplies of the house and spends it on alcohol and tobacco and drugs, the guy is a fool. And you tell that person that I say it and the Bible says it. There were. Jesus' parable of the foolish and wise virgins. The foolish virgins turned off their lamps. Unto the bridegroom came and then turned them on. The foolish kept their lights on. And when the bridegroom came, the lights went on. And they went to go start the fire. And there was no more oil. Proverbs chapter 31 says about the the, uh, 
a woman there. I can't think right now. Proverbs 31. Ooh, boy. The virtuous woman. <laughs> can't think of it. She says her supplies, I'm not quoting the verse, but she says her supplies are, are supplied in the house. Her light goes not out. When there's stuff to be needed in the house, the virtuous woman has the stuff in the house that needs to be done. And the grocery list to get what's not to be. And when you spend improper use of your wealth, you are a fool. Treasure. Now, like I said, I made a little thing, you know, treasure, chest, treasure, island, look at a treasure can be also, you know, a lockbox where you got emergency money in case a storm or electricity goes out. That's treasure. You may have something that is of value and that you've got it somewhere hidden in the proper place that you could pass on to your children. That they can get some, some value out. That's treasure. You know, you can say, you know, when it comes time, well, where's all your money? You need money for this. Oh, I spent it on entertainment again. I spent it on alcohol. I spent it on woman drinking and that prodigal son had nothing at the end. He had no friends. He couldn't even eat the corn of, of the pigs. That prodigal son should be called the foolish son that got right. That's what it should be. Prodigal means wasteful. That's a fool. This would be a proper verse for the prodigal son. Okay, Proverbs. Lost where I was. So he's usually spent on stupid things, not necessary. Spent on showing nothing for what was bought. How about lottery tickets? I can't believe how much people are paying for scratch-off tickets today. I was foolish once. I go in, I, I get, I get a ticket. I, I win two dollars. I go get two tickets and lost two dollars. What do I show for it? Nothing. This is a stupid little card. That little piece of paper, he's got numbers on it, and you know, I lost. That's foolish. I've been known sometimes to go up to people who are buying lodge to say, listen, just, just give me the money. I'll put it to good use. Proverbs 22, 15. Foolish people spend their money. Now, we all spend our money foolishly many a time. Many a time. We've... We, Listen, you look, if you honestly look back at your life, Proverbs 22, 15, I have, and look back at all the stupid things you spent your money on and say, oh, if I had that money in a bank account, oh, what I could get today. We've all done it. Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction, oh, here's another correction, shall drive it far from him. Why are children killing children today? Because you don't punish them. You do not apply discipline. Why is the schools all messed up? Because you do not application on the behind of the Board of Education. I'm going to tell you the grammar school I grew up, in my mind, uh, it's forgetting things. I, I, I forget what the principal, I, I have a principal's name, but I'm not sure if it was the correct one. But there were times I was called to his office. And there his there it was his desk. And above his head on the wall, there was a large paddle that said the Board of Education. Now that principal never used it on me. But I feared the day he would. My mom cor corrected me. I think maybe within time I could say that. My mom corrected me with yardsticks. I feared that yardstick. I feared the punishment of my mother. That kept me from a lot of trouble. A child is born to be foolish, the Bible said. He's not your sweet little darling. He's not innocent. He's a child of sin for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That little 
nice little child you got is a sinner and most likely is guilty. I don't know if I can quote, but, you know, a quote from Judge Judy. Uh, I like what she says about teenagers. How do you know when a teenager is lying? They open their mouth. Uh, that's from a woman who sat on the circuit court of dealing with children and family. I think she's got some good things that she learned from a life lesson. The rod of correction. It does not say one, two, three, the time out. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything but correction rod. And the only way to deliver that foolish from that child is that rod and it shall drive it from him. You know these kids are involved in crimes today, involved in major crimes, are making the news because they have not had any application of any correction put upon them of the Bible ways, which means that little behind needs to get spanked. And you don't like it, that's tough because you're wrong and the Bible's correct. The interactivity of children is being foolish. It's too bad many grown up <coughs> adults <coughs> never grow up and retain that interactivity of children of being foolish. Paul says, when I was a child, I'm not quoting the verse, you know, I did childish things, but I grew up. I think he even says he something about being foolish. That might be wrong. They must be corrected out of it. They're not going to correct their own way out of the mess out of the foolishness they got. They need instruction. They need help. And that should come from the parents. That should come from the church. And that should come from the education system. So we are all fools. But some are no longer fools thanks to the special loving care of fathers and or mothers. And maybe grandparents. If you're brought up right and you have a sensible mind and you have prudency and you have wisdom and you have knowledge and you have understanding and God has given you a good parents, even if they're unsaved. My parents are, were unsaved when I grew up. My mom got saved in 2010 when I was, I forget what age I was, in my 30s, I believe. My dad's not ever gotten saved. My dad did not bring me up in the ways that he should have. My dad brought me up in the opposite. My mom loved me. My mom chastised me. My mom applied the rod of correction. All 36 inches of it. And I'm going to tell you, there have been crimes in my life that I wanted to do and my mom bringing me up the way she did, I didn't do it. I stopped. There were times I committed a crime and the conscience that my mom put in my behind, I went back and undid that crime. And then there were times I committed the crime. My own free will. And my mom taught me the valuable lesson that my father should have taught me. If you're going to sin, you're going to face judgment. Better not sin and please your mother. Better not sin and please your heavenly father. And with no correction, you have the modern American child today. Rebellious and foolish. Playing with a gun. Not only is that foolish for the parents to leave it out, but it's foolish for a child to pick up. And with this day and age, the knowledge that a gun can shoot is everywhere. We got to move on. We'll be on this all night. Proverbs 23 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool. For he, the fool, will despise the wisdom of thy words. Now watch that word. Lay it out. You've got wisdom. 
of thy word. I've got wisdom. And I'm speaking to a fool. But the Bible says, speak not in the fool. With your wisdom, because he's not going to listen, you are wasting your time. When you learn, a fool will not listen. What you have learned, do not talk any longer to a fool. You will become hated. The fool does not want to hear from you, no matter how much you care or love for them. And that has come across the Proverbs where we have the foolish son with his parents. As much as the parents want to correct that fool that they have. He's not going to listen. As much as our last lesson that we've done again, the, Ameri the, the public education system of trying to educate fools who have no heart in it. There are educators, there are teachers, or whatever you call them today, as far as K to the highest grade you can get in college, they are very wise in wisdom. But that fool that is made to sit in that seat is not going to listen to that wisdom. You're wasting your time. Find someone who does want to listen. Find someone who's willing to listen. Find someone who may not be able to be capable of gasping the wisdom, but they're going to try. In my wife's room is a dialysis machine and a dialysis technician. Now, I'm not ever going to grow up to learn how to do dialysis, as far as I know. But there was much things to ask that gentleman of his wisdom, and I listen, I hear, and I learn things. And you could have a fool sit in that room, and then, you know, as you walk out of the hospital room, they say, Sally, what did you learn today about the dialysis? Well, I thought it was urine, but it's the blood. And that procedure took almost two hours. And, you know, it goes through the, the veins and it's, you know, temporary. It's not, I thought it was going to be for three days straight, but it's not. You have a, the same, you have the fool walk out of the same room and say, okay, what'd you learn? Well, it was quite noisy. Kind of smelled. Fool. Proverbs 24 7. 24 7. How's that? 24 7. That expression means for us today is all day, all week. 24 7. Wisdom is too high for the fool. Wisdom is too high for a fool. Connor that back to 23 verse 9. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opens not his mouth in the gate. Now, the gate in the Bible is judgment. The gates in the Bible would be like you going to the, to the courthouse, wherever your nearby courthouse is. Whatever, I mean, if it's traffic court, if it's family, wherever the courthouse is closer to you, if you were to go to that courthouse because you have a case pending, and you walk up and you get before the judge, and the judge says, okay, what's your side of the story? Judge uh, would, would call upon that fool, and he has nothing to say. He's amongst a group of people of the city. And his talk is worthless, stupid, and void. Where if you have your average man of wisdom, he can step, he can approach the people at the gate and they can learn from each other. They can a fool cannot reach to be wise. Because if he were to be wise, he would not be a fool. You cannot have a wise fool. That's impossible. There is no aim or desire of a fool but foolishness. And foolishness is void of no, no value. It's vain. In the gate was a place of judgment as a courtroom. It's a place of silver, silver, silver matters and government hearings, and legal transactions, Ruth chapter 4. A fool cannot speak, for he's found guilty. He's found unwise. He's found unable. 
He has no character of credibility, unless you're in America today. America gives character and credibility and pleads innocent and gives them a title of great knowledge and power. Charlie Darwin knew nothing of God and creation, and yet he's lifted up above all in the colleges, in the public school. Proverbs 24, 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. And we don't need about the scorn, or we're not talking about scorn. How do you like that? You're a fool. Do you have thoughts? Sin. What's a sin? Are you a fool? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, that's a sin. Now, we've already seen that a fool has rejected the way that Jesus said he is. So when a fool thinks, oh, I can do works, that's a sin. I can go to this denomination, that's a sin. This angel, this woman can get, that's a sin. Whatever you think of, whatever man can come up, whatever occult, can be processed today. If it's not the way, the truth, and the light. If it's somebody that thought of something, it is sin. Whoever thought about, oh, there's more than male, female, gender, that's a sin. That's a foolish thought. Whoever thought of the idea that a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman, that is a sin. A fool came up with that. Whoever thought that you can appease God and make God happy with anything but the blood of Jesus Christ. That's a foolish thought. It's a sin. Sin is to think for foolish. His inner ideas and process of thinking of sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him it is sin. And for me personally, I don't know what ministry you have of telling people the gospel of Jesus Christ and any way you do it, correct, correct. Long as it is the blood, the, the burial, the death, the blood, and the burial, resurrection, nothing else added. And when I preach on the street, when I talk on the street and tell you that Jesus Christ is the way, Jesus Christ is the only means to get out of hell, Jesus Christ is the only means that God accepts for salvation. Well, if I speak in the ears of a fool, say no much because he's not going to listen. And if, a, if the fool would say, oh, you Bible thumper, oh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, will you shut up? Oh, will you go away? Oh, I got my religion. Oh, I'm okay. Oh, there's no death. Oh, there's no hell. The thought of the foolish. The thought of the foolishness. The, so, the thought of the fools. It is sin. It is sin to have somebody, the way that God has given them to present the gospel to you and to think otherwise is a sin. And to turn from the way, the truth, and the life. To think that God has other ways or there is no God. That thought is a sin. Proverbs 26, 1. Proverbs 26, 1. As snow in summer, as rain in harvest, so is honor. So, excuse me, so honor is not seemly for a fool. It's not fit. It's not fit at all. What are you talking about? Odd, oddity. Rare. Fools are not given to be honored except in America. You do not get snow in the summer. That'd be a rare phenomenon. In the harvest, in the land of Israel, it did not rain. So when you give an honor to a fool, when you name a street after a fool, when you make a statue to a fool, or you have a building wing named to a fool, 
It's not seemly in the Bible. Now in America it is, but not in the Bible. As I said, Darwin and his evolution of lies and lift it up and there's probably places of pictures of Charlie Darwin. There's probably a, a statue of Charlie Darwin's face and there's this monkey people and there's, you know, that, that, that poster of the, you know, the eight walk and he's standing up and he's picking his nose at the end. And you give honor and you give grades and you give attention and you pay money for that. Bible says that's foolish. It's unseemly. It's not proper to do it. 26.3. A whip for a horse. Horse is not going the right direction. A bridle for an ass. Balaam. When that ass acts up three different times, the Bible says he whipped it. A rod. Oh, here's that rod again for the fool's back. Now the whip, the bridle, and the rod are all training needs. They help the animal. They help the person to do better, to learn that what you just did is wrong. And when you send somebody to a correction system and you reward them and you take care of them for their wrong, you are just giving to their pleasures with no correction. Notice that rod again, you'll find that throughout Proverbs. That's a, that's a wooden cylinder thing and it goes onto the rear end because it's called child rearing. You never hit a child in the face, you never smack them in the hand, you never hit them in the leg, you don't get them in the stomach, you don't get them on the back, you get them on the butt. God has designed one specific part of the body of children to receive that education. You done wrong, you sinned against us, you sinned against God, now bend over. And don't start crying because I haven't started nothing yet. That's in Proverbs too. So, correction, chastisement. If he will adhere to it. Now, what we've read so far, maybe a fool will get right. Maybe. But in most cases, they don't. But you try. You try. Don't give up on a fool, but when he's presently a fool and wants to be a fool, then you stop, like we learn. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy word. That moment, he, you know, I'm just going to be a fool. All right. But if you get a fool that wants to learn, remember, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Every child is born in foolishness, but you can learn them out. You can correct them out of foolishness. If they want to, glory to God. If they don't want to, then they become ashamed to their parents. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop right here. Because the next two verses are good ones. And I think they should just be dealt by themselves. Good time to stop right now. But what about the fool? He needs correction. He does not need to be rewarded. He needs the proper biblical correction. He don't need a fantasized luxury royalty of discipline. He is to be made ashamed and not rewarded. He is to be, I don't want to be him. We don't put his name in lights. We don't put his name on street signs. We don't name buildings after a fool. The Bible is against the fool. He does not want to learn. He is against wisdom. He is not wise, but he can be wise. And once he becomes wise, he's no longer a fool. But it takes work. 